everybody, this is Keith here of Euphoria Pictures. Welcome back to my channel. Right, folks, so this is going to be a simple pickups video. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on some of the movies that I picked up on 4K and Blu-ray over the last couple of weeks. Now, there's not going to be many in this video. I think it's six altogether. And uh, some of them are good, some of them not so good, unfortunately. Uh, it's always the way with myself. When I pick up horror movies that I'm not particularly aware of, it never seems to work out for me. And that's the case with one or two in this video. But uh, look, that's the, that's the heartbreaks of being a collector like myself. Uh, you know, you, you pick up a couple of clangers along the way. It, it happens, unfortunately. Thankfully, I didn't spend much money on them. So I'm going to jump right into this and I'm going to share... I'm going to start with the 4K releases. Because the three 4K releases that I'm going to be showing here... I actually got them from HD Movie Source, and I just wanted to quickly throw out a huge shout out to the lads over at HD Movie Source, Carl and Mark. Once again, thank you so much for sending these my way. Uh, it's great to have an outlet like yourselves to get American releases like this, and it would have been a shame uh, to miss out on these because they are great movies. And I was genuinely excited to get my hands of them on 4K. So folks, if you are looking for an outlet to pick up certain American releases, uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to HD Movie Source's website. And if you go on and you find something that you might be interested in, you'll see like a promotion code, put in Euphoria, and you'll get a certain percentage off your order. So uh, lads, thank you once again. Absolutely incredible. Right folks, so I'm going to jump right into this and I'm going to start with the first one I have here which is uh, World War Z. So this is a Scream Factory title. Now, uh, this is not a Scream Factory Collector's Edition so that means uh, you, there's no slipcover available for this release in case you're wondering. Yes, cannot get a slip so the best way you could probably do it is try and get a custom slip somewhere. I know a lot of people do get them done out there and the option is there for you to do it. But uh, look, I'm more than happy with the uh, with the standard version. So uh, yes, uh, World War Z stars Brad Pitt. Uh, it's basically about this zombie outbreak that happens. Brad Pitt is called in to investigate where it all started from. And uh, I found it to be a very, very enjoyable movie. I think there's a lot of hatred out there for it. Me personally, I thought it was, I thought it was highly entertaining. Even though the movie had issues, it had serious issues, even when it came to making it. Uh, there were so many reshoots, and even on set there was, all, there was so many problems. And it was a weird kind of anomaly as well, because normally when you hear of a movie going through all the troubles that this went through, 9 out of 10 times it would just bomb at the box office, but not the case with this one. It was a huge, huge box office success. And I was always hoping that we would get a sequel to this, but unfortunately, it's never happened. Maybe Paramount said to themselves, you know what? We got very, very lucky with this movie and we're not going to chance around with a second one. Uh, which is a bit of a shame because it's massively opened for a second one. Now, the 4K transfer on this one, folks, look, it is one of those subtle upgrades. And I mean subtle. Um, it, is, it is what you call a minor upgrade over what was already a stunning looking Blu-ray. As a matter of fact, folks, there's actually a downgrade in audio on this as well. If you actually have the Paramount Blu-ray release, you'll get a DTS 7.1 audio. In this one, it's a DTS 5.1 audio, but take nothing away from it. It still sounds amazing. I just wish there was a bit more to the picture. It's very hard to appreciate some of the, the some of the 4K transfer when you see the way that some of the camera work is done. Just look at that opening sequence, that first initial attack on the city. Oh my god, the camera is shaking all over the place. And it's just very hard to kind of just fully appreciate the picture. But then when it settles, and all of a sudden the cameras are no longer moving, you get to see a nice little uptick there in quality, picture quality. But don't be expecting, like I said, a night and day difference over the previous Blu-ray. But I'm still very happy to have it. Uh, the extended cut in this as well, folks, just so you know, it's only on the Blu-ray once again. Why did it keep doing that? So, uh, yes, the extended cut is on the Blu-ray. Uh, unfortunately, not part of the 4K release. So, there you have it, folks. Uh, World War Z. Not what I was hoping, but still very happy to have it. Right, so up next, and this one was such a big deal to get in my hands. I was a huge fan of this movie, and to see it on 4K was something very, very special. And it is, of course, The Man in the Iron Mask. 
I was always a huge fan of this movie. And if you're not particularly aware of it, it's, it is a Musketeer movie. Only for in this one, the Musketeers are a bit older. And uh, all four of them must reunite again together to save France from this horrible king, uh, King Louis, who is played by Leonardo DiCaprio. It's it's a great cast. It really is. You got the likes of John Malkovich, Gerard Depardieu, uh, Gabriel Byrne, and Jeremy Irons. All four of them play the Musketeers in this, and each one of them put in an absolute stellar performance. It's there's a lot of humour to it as well. It is very suspenseful. It is very moving as well. It gave me a bit of everything. And like I said, I was genuinely excited to get this one on 4K. And I'm happy to report this is an absolutely stunning looking 4K transfer. As you know, if you're aware of this movie, there is a lot of outdoor scenes. So like I'm always saying that, that means a lot of natural light. And it just lends so well uh, to 4K but there's scenes in it where you see a lot of the greenery and the, the vibrancy on that greenery literally just pops off the screen. It is absolutely stunning. There is layer upon layer upon layer of depth to this picture. It is a stunning, stunning 4K transfer. And if you're a fan of this one, definitely recommend checking it out. Now it comes with a DTS 5.1 audio on this as well. It's not the most exciting you're ever likely to hear, but look, that's the movie itself. But for the most part, it gets the job done. The dialogue is clean. It's always centered. There is a nice bit of activity. Just don't be expecting it too much during this movie. It is, for the most part, front heavy. Uh, it's mostly the score that you're going to be hearing that's basically just adds a certain presence to that sound. But it sounds quite amazing at times. And uh, yeah, I have no complaints with it. It is what it is. So there you have it, folks. Uh, the Man in the Iron Mask. And like I said, such a huge deal to get that in my hands. Right, so up next, I picked up carry and as you can see it's another scream factory title and great to get the slip cover with this one as well now a lot of you out there are probably wondering why did i not pick up the arrow video edition well it's quite simple i will not entertain anything when it comes to arrow video and these limited edition sets particularly when they came out on blu-ray previously i find it to be incredibly lazy giving us the exact same packaging as we got before the only difference is there's a 4K disc inside it instead of a Blu-ray. I won't enter entertain it. I haven't done it so far. I've actually missed out on so many uh, big 4K titles like Robocop, Candyman, because I already had the limited edition sets on Blu-ray. There was no way I was going to buy them again because I know for a fact it would piss me off sitting in this room, looking at my Arrow video collection, seeing two carries sitting beside each other, looking identical. Now, I know a lot of people out there will say, look, you can sell, sell your Blu-ray. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to, and I would never sell anything in my collection either. So, yes, I will not entertain anything that Arrow Video do in terms of limited editions, like I said, particularly if they have them out in Blu-ray before. And I have to admit, I'm happy I picked this one up in the end because the 4K transfer is stunning. It really is. Now, I was somewhat hesitant about picking this up because Carrie is one of them movies that has this specific look to it. It almost has that soft lens look. But I have to tell you, is that soft lens, is it's not near as evident on this release as it was on the previous Blu-ray. It's a stunning looking 4K transfer. The grain structure is it's there. It's I won't say it's fine, but I'm not going to say it's heavy. It's somewhere in the middle there. But it is beautifully, beautifully consistent. It is hands down the best this movie has ever looked. You're going to appreciate the Dolby Vision colours in this one in particular. Specifically the end sequence. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone. But if you know it, you know it. It looks stunning. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more happier with the 4K transfer on this one. It comes with a DTS 5.1 audio as well. And it was equally as impressive as the picture quality itself. So there you have it folks, Carrie, great to finally have that now on 4K. Right, so up next we are going on to the Blu-rays and I finally got to add this one to my collection, uh, A Haunting in Venice. Now the reason to why I left it for so long to finally pick this up is because I was very concerned that this was going to get a 4K release. Uh, the other two movies in that trilogy did get 4K releases and I thought they were kind of pulling the fast one, releasing the Blu-ray first. And then all of a sudden giving us the 4K. But I let enough time pass. There was no sign of the 4K release coming. And it really is a shame when you consider how beautiful, uh, you know, Murder on the Orient Express looks and Death on the Nile. Uh, but take nothing away from this Blu-ray. It was, 
it was quite beautiful. It really, really was. It comes with a DTS 7.1 audio as well. Very engaging, very immersive. Uh, but then the movie itself just lends very well to all of that. Now, I was a bit sceptical going into this one. I thought I was going to walk away from this saying this is hands down the worst of the three. But you know what? It's my second favourite. It's Murder on the Orient Express is still my favourite. This one edges Death on the Nile. They're very, very close to each other. But it was highly, highly entertaining. And it is largely down to the setting of, the setting of the movie. The cast is not what you call all-star cast like they had in the previous movies. But for the most part, they all deliver on the performances. And um, I was pleasantly surprised, to say the least. And uh, I would love to see more of these. And I really do hope we get more of them sometime in the future. So there you go, folks. Uh, Haunting in Venice. If you're into this trilogy and you haven't checked this one out, give it a go. I think you'll be massively surprised by it. Right, so up next is two <laughs> very bad horror movies, unfortunately. So I'm going to start with the first one here, and it is uh, Imaginary. And this is another Jason Blum horror movie. Now, I've always said it when it comes to Jason Blum, the man is single-handedly keeping horror alive. And it's a great thing, it really, really is. The only problem is, when he delivers the goods, he delivers. But when he delivers a bad movie... They are some of the worst you will ever see out there. Now, I recently reviewed Night Swim, and I said Night Swim was one of the worst horror movies I've seen in the last decade. I won't say that this one is as bad, but it's not a million miles away, which is a bit of a shame, because the first 40 minutes of this movie is highly enjoyable. Very atmospheric, uh, very scary, very creepy. It has a lot going for it, but it just collapses after 40 minutes. It borrows heavily from so many other horror movies, particularly Insidious. When you watch the Insidious movies, when they go into the further, they do something very similar to this, and it is absolutely horrible. Absolutely no imagination gone into this whatsoever, which is ironic, seeming it's called imaginary. But uh, I can't recommend it, folks. You know, a lot of you might be saying, no, wait a minute, the first 40 minutes were enjoyable. Maybe it's worth checking out for them 40. Don't. Do not waste your time. Only if you can get this on the cheap would I recommend doing so. Uh, it's a poor, it's a poor, poor movie. Uh, like I said, it borrows heavily from so many movies. And it is so poorly, poorly executed. And uh, yeah, this one was a real shame. Now the picture quality on this Blu-ray, I have to tell you, it's one of them picture qualities where it makes you question 4K. <laughs> the picture is absolutely stunning on this release. And it does come with um, a Dolby Atmos soundtrack on this. And the Dolby Atmos is the real winner. But I'm always saying it when it comes to horror movies. Dolby Atmos and Dolby, uh, horror just go hand in hand. And this one is very engaging, incredibly immersive. There's a lot going on, particularly with your rear channels and your overheads. Particularly when they go into that kind of... I'm going to call it the further. If you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But yes, it's a very active uh, Dolby Atmos. And it's the only one positive that I can give towards this movie. Uh, its picture and its sound. But other than that, what's the point when the movie is as bad as it is? So there you go, folks. Uh, imaginary. So that brings me last to this absolute god-awful heap of shit. And it is called... Baghead. Baghead. Like, seriously, what was I thinking? Of course the movie was going to be crap when it's called Baghead. So, uh, the plot of this movie is basically this young girl, she inherits this pub from her father who passed away. Uh, she finds out in the basement that there's this creature or whatever you want to call it. It has a bag over its head. And basically what it does is if you actually give... An object, like someone passed away in your life, if you give an object that belonged to that person, uh, he will basically swallow, this creature will swallow the object, and for two minutes, he can bring that loved one back. But uh, after the two minutes, the creature gains control, and then it just becomes all evil and shit. You know what, the premise, I make the premise sound quite in uh, intriguing, but trust me, do not waste your time with this absolute shit fest of a movie uh, absolutely no imagination no scares no suspense shit performances it's an all-round crap movie and uh, like i said baghead do you know when you actually watch the movie there's just so many good titles they could have came up with 
but they opted for Baghead. Uh, look, this one is my own fault. Thankfully, the one saving grace is I didn't pay a whole lot for it. It actually comes with a Dolby Atmos soundtrack as well. And I have to admit, when I seen the Dolby Atmos soundtrack in this one, it kind of got my hopes up for the movie. Because I was, like, I was like, wow, they put Dolby Atmos. If they went to the trouble of putting Dolby Atmos, there must be something to the movie. No. And I have to tell you, the Dolby Atmos, it doesn't really elevate it at all. If Is there? I can't actually remember if there was actually one scene... Where I heard anything above me, which is a strange thing when it comes to Dolby Atmos. So uh, yes, unfortunately, I can't recommend this one whatsoever, folks. Like I said, the movie is awful. The Atmos is not particularly immersive. The picture quality is quite decent on it. I have to give it that. Uh, it's the one positive thing I can say for it, unfortunately. So uh, there you have it, folks. Baghead. Uh, <laughs> I can't stop laughing every time I say the name of the title. Ridiculous. So there you have it folks, that's everything that I picked up in the last week or two and uh, some great pickups but some very poor ones in there but look, I'm kind of used to that now. So there you have it, so as per usual if you did like what you see here please do give it a thumbs up and if you could do, leave a comment down below and please do share your thoughts on some of these movies that I've featured in this video. And yeah, I hope to see you all again real soon with my next video. Until then, I'll see you soon, bye bye.